26 past the hour, a live look at the White House. Joining us now from Washington, NBC chief foreign affairs correspondent and host of Andrea Mitchell Reports, Andrea Mitchell. And from Capitol Hill, Republican senator from Georgia and vice chairman of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, Senator Saxby Chambliss. The committee is scheduled to hear former CIA director David Petraeus give his testimony on the Megazi attack later this morning. <coughs> senator, we'll start there. What will you be looking for? Well, General Petraeus brings a little different perspective to the committee this morning than what we had yesterday. We had uh, the leaders from the intelligence community, including acting CIA director uh, Mike Morrell and Jim Clapper, the DNI, and others. Uh, the difference that we're looking for today is General Petraeus obviously was involved in making some of the key decisions, and we want to know what his thought process was. Plus, he's the only member of the leadership team that has been back to Libya since September 11. He was just there several days ago. Uh, being on the ground, he has a little bit different perspective, so we're going to be talking with him about that. Hey, Saxby, uh, Joe here. Uh, good to talk to you again. You, hey, and, you, know, you know Susan Rice, our UN ambassador, has been taking a lot of heat. Uh, John McCain, uh, Lindsey Graham going after her for repeating what the president says was the intel that was available at the time. Uh, you're on the committee. Can you tell us? Was Susan Rice, from what you know, uh, just repeating what was being told to everybody in Washington at the time uh, on what had happened in Benghazi? Well, here's what I think, Joe. I think um, without question. I mean, you know, you got guys uh, storming a consulate with uh, AK-47s, with RPGs and firing mortars. They knew immediately this was a terrorist attack. There wasn't any question about that. And why the White House didn't come out and say that immediately, I don't know. They tried to soften it somewhat with regard to it was a spontaneous action that stemmed from a protest. Uh, there was a question about whether protesters were there. And uh, five days later, Susan Rice goes on TV and says that not only was it a protest, but it apparently stemmed from this um, uh, trailer or this movie that had been shown. And uh, very honestly, by that point in time, we were beyond that. So I, I do think that uh, there was some politics involved in the message that the White House wanted to send. Well, well so Saxby, you obviously hold a very important position on the Intelligence Committee. Uh, the, the President the White House is saying that all Susan Rice was repeating on Meet the Press was what everybody else was being told from America's intelligence community. If Susan Rice was giving bad information five days later, and if the intelligence community was her source, this is a bigger question about the failings of the intelligence community. I'm, I'm just trying to sort through this. Yeah, and that's a question that, very frankly, Joe, we discussed in depth yesterday with the community. We spent an awful lot of time on these talking points. Uh, the one thing I can tell you is it'll be a long time before unclassified talking points are put out by the intelligence community. <laughs> um, that probably was, was, uh, was a mistake. But um, uh, Susan Rice was sent to give a White House message. It was not an intelligence community message. And there's a very clear distinction in that. Um, Andrea, it's, it's David up here in New York. I have a question for you on some of the bigger fights yeah. here. I mean, isn't this really beyond the Susan Rice questions, which I know are going to be litigated fiercely, about what was happening on the ground in terms of protecting U.S. personnel, namely the ambassador? What kind of coordination was there or was there not between the CIA presence, which was substantial in Benghazi, and State Department security? Well, I think those are the questions that I would suspect uh, Senator Ch uh, Chambliss and Dianne Feinstein and the House, their House counterparts are also going to be asking because they want to know the timeline. Uh, they had five separate beyond warnings, five separate incidents, as Senator Feinstein has made very clear, and as we have been told, five separate incidents in Benghazi against the British ambassador, against our own consulate, uh, in the months leading up to this. The State Department was told about this. There's been plenty of testimony about that. So why did they leave our diplomats there, uh, not better protected? Why did they not shut it down or 
beef it up and send in the military? Those are questions that I think also have to be asked. And where are we at risk elsewhere in the world? Senator, I uh, would encourage you to jump in here and uh, tell me because you know a whole lot more about this. And Senator, can I just add to what Andrea is asking there, which is critical. Do you think it was a mistake given the security inadequacy that we know about now in Benghazi for our ambassador to be in Benghazi on 9-11? Well, it's pretty easy to look back now and say, sure, I mean, he shouldn't have been there. Uh, the fact is that he, uh, the CIA, number one, let, let me clear up a myth, the CIA does not provide any security. A lot of American public, I think, thinks that's the case. Security here was actually provided by the Libyans, and that's normal. The host country provides security and, uh, for all of our embassies and all of our consulates. As it turned out, they simply weren't capable. And, Andrew, you make a good point, and it's something that we talked with uh, Ambassador Kennedy about yesterday, who is a longtime career diplomat, very um, um, uh, outstanding guy from the State Department. We said, look, you know, uh, why aren't you guys thinking about other places? And he very clearly stated they are. And if we can't get the protection we need, we do have no business there. So long range, that's going to be a problem. That doesn't solve yeah. the Benghazi issue, but long range, you're right. Mark Halpern, jump in. Senator, if I could ask you to just put a little finer point on what you're saying about Ambassador Rice. Are you saying that she has lied and the White House has lied when they've said that what she said on the Sunday shows was based not on uh, the White House political spin, as you've been saying, but specifically, specifically on what the intelligence, intelligence community's best sense of things was at the time? I'm not saying she lied. I'm just saying she, did, she didn't tell. <clears throat> she put a softer touch on what the real facts were. That's not lying. She just didn't get out there and say, look, this is a terrorist attack. Somebody screwed up. And we got to get to the bottom of it. I mean, that's where we were uh, two days later, not five days later. And I think the American people would have been better served and they would have a better feeling about what happened in Benghazi if the White House had just been forthcoming very quickly. And they knew by then more about what happened than what was being talked about. Senator, back to a point that, uh, that you and Joe touched upon just a couple of minutes ago. Given, given the level of ferocity of the attack on the consulate, given the weapons involved, it was clearly planned. It was clearly a planned assault on that consulate. So given what happened and given in the aftermath the, the intel that was available and that we heard provided uh, through Ambassador Rice, are we looking at a shocking lack of human intel cap capability on our, on our part in eastern Libya or throughout Libya? Yeah, well, you have to remember this is a part of the world that we haven't had much of a presence in for decades uh, under Gaddafi. And um, our intelligence community did put some assets on the ground as quickly as possible. But uh, the one question that I've asked is at the heart of what you just asked, and that is, we are the best at what we do. And if we couldn't figure out that there were a group of bad guys planning to attack this consulate, why not? Because we've always been able to, to put people in the right places to figure out those kinds of things. We knew, for example, that there were a lot of Al-Qaeda operatives in Libya training people and being trained themselves. Yeah. But yet we had no penetration of that. And um, unfortunately, we didn't know this attack was, was being planned. And uh, finally, Andrea Mitchell, um, given everything going on, including the inspector general for the CIA launching an investigation into General Petraeus's conduct on on other uh, in other areas um, your your thoughts on his testimony today Andrew? Andrew? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't quite hear, I didn't fully hear the question I, I think you were asking about the IG investigation and that we are told is open-ended but is focused primarily on whether he used the resources and the assets you know, the security detail, all of the other resources of the agency to further his relationship, the relationship he has acknowledged with Paula Broadwell. And that has potential legal implications. They say that the FBI has assured them that he did not misuse any intelligence. Of course, it's open-ended, and if they find something, they will pursue it. But that is not what they're specifically looking in. But uh, Secret uh, Senator Chambliss, uh, Sec 
Saxby Chambliss may know more about that and what questions he's going to be asking today. All right, Saxby, we're going to be uh, following it closely, as uh, I'm sure many, many Americans are. Thank you so much for being with us. It's always great to see you. And Andrea, Thanks, thank guys. you Same as well. Here. You got the sure question there. And by, and by the way, Saxby, I got a feeling we're going to see you in Atlanta uh, when Alabama takes on Georgia. Hey, go dogs. <laughs> Roll tide, baby. Right. I'll see you there. David Gregory, thank you.